Lift our hearts, lift our strains, let's revere our school of fame, ever true, loyal to, for our colors, white and blue. Dear Princeton High School, our love, our pride, we've always held you. Welcome to the Brush Fork Armory for tonight, the Preston Tigers taking on the North Fork Blue Demons in the battle of the countryside, the hereabouts. And if you're a basketball fan of Southern West Virginia and you're not here, then we hope that you're ailing a little bit, but we're glad to have, those, have you with us on Big Way Radio. I'm Glenn May. At the Brush Fork Armory, the Tigers and the Demons and for the rematch. And we're going to talk with Gary Dove, and Gary is the... Oh, I guess you would call him the blue blood of the statisticians of Southern West Virginia. Gary, you've been with the North Fork Athletic Program now for an awful long time. How many years has it been? I've been with North Fork 15 years now. Jennings started uh, my senior year, the 66-67 year, and I started statistician that year, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to be with the team ever since. Hey, keep on, you tell your age. <laughs> But first of all, let me say this, welcome and well. Gary, welcome aboard on our pregame show. Well, thank you a lot. It's really nice to be here, Gene. And, of course, uh, you've seen a lot of uh, ball players come and go, and we want to talk about basketball because that's, that's what we're interested in right now. Of course, you're also very, very involved with Johnny Bryant and the football program down there. But let's talk about some of the, the great ball players that you've seen uh, come down the line since you were at North Fork. And, of course, you've been a part of the, uh, what, nine or ten state championships? Right, we have eight right now, eight in uh, the past 10 years. We started in the 70-71 uh, season, and that was our first one. Then uh, we didn't win another one until 74, and we've won one ever from 74 on up through this past March. And some of the, the ball players that you can remember or you can recall or come to mind, and of course, well, this is not a, a complete list, but the ones that can stand out in your memory right now, can you name some of them and maybe what they, they did or the years they played? One of them that comes to mind real fast when you play uh, uh, Princeton is Bruce Henthorne. Bruce was a senior in 71 when we beat uh, Golly Bridge in the finals for the, our first state championship. He was our point guard and uh, team leader, and uh, Bruce did an outstanding job all through that season as he did his previous two seasons. Uh, Bruce was on the team that really started it all for us by winning the first state championship. Uh, another one that comes to mind off that team is a, four, or is a resident now of Mercer County, John Cox, along with uh, Dave McDaniel and Ronnie Spencer. Then in 74, uh, Mark Page, our assistant coach now, and Duck Riley were two of our better ball players on that team that uh, won the state championship in well, 75. Now, let's just talk a little bit about each one of these, these lads that you're mentioning. Many of these went on and played very, very uh, talented college ball. And Duck Riley, as an example, played basketball at Norfolk and did a tremendous job of it. He also played football at WVU. And, of course, Ronnie Spencer right here at Bluefield State, Dave McDaniel over uh, Beckley College. And, uh, of course, uh, Bruce Henson, I think he went out to uh, Concord. I don't know if he played ball out there or not. But these athletes that you're naming, they didn't, they weren't just not great high school athletes. They were also college capable. Right, right. They went on to, to play in college and, and played well, as uh, did Mark, uh, Mark Page, our assistant coach now. He graduated in 74 with Duck Riley and, of course, played at Bluefield State. They had a very illustrious career there. Uh, some others down the line or uh, Scotty Todd, who uh, went to college one year, is working now. Of course, Russell Todd, who graduated two years ago and is up at WVU now, starring at uh, one forward for the Mountaineers this year. 
Well, that's true. Plus, uh, Scotty played, uh, started over here at Bluefield State uh, for a couple of years and uh, was sixth man for a couple of years. So Scotty played, and of course, uh, you remember String Harris at String may have been one of the real good was one of the he didn't go to a major college but i think most of the people kind of believe that he could have if he so desired right he uh he had all the tools really he was quick uh, he really fooled it the way he could jump for his size and he was by far the best front man we've ever had on our press when we go into full court press he would be on the baseline all the man throwing the ball in bounds and uh, he was the best we've ever had there string uh, had a great freshman career or uh, season at bluefield state college then he ran into injuries both his sophomore and junior years and i think that uh, held him back some he but, had that uh, knee for a pretty bad. right potentially he was a great one he is now graduated and is uh, teaching in our school system in McDowell County at the current time. Oh, is that right? I didn't know where he was. Now, he also had a guard over here. He wasn't very big, but uh, quick as lightning. And I think he uh, went up north somewhere to William Wade that worked the middle on that fast break for a couple of years for you. The kick could really move the ball. Right. He went to uh, Fairmont State. He played, uh, I think, about a season and a half for Joe Retton's basketball team. He was quarterback and played defensive back in high school for John on the football team, and uh, he and Joe parted company there about midway through William's sophomore season. He's played defensive back for the uh, Fairmont State uh, football team the last two years. Gary, if I ask you, what one thing really stands out in your, in your mind as being a, a real satisfying part of being a part of the program so forth, is there any one thing that really comes to mind that, that you just wouldn't trade that memory for anything? There have been many, but I think one that is Humbled me the most is in the uh, state tournament in 1977. We played, uh, I can't even remember the team on Thursday night, and two officials from Maryland, John Eversole and Ron Cage, called the game. And uh, we're really proud of the fact that in our eight state championship appearances, we've won the sportsmanship trophy seven out of the eight times. And uh, after we played and won, in the semifinals on Thursday night, these two officials called, and I ran into John Eversole the next night, and he asked me, he was very frank, and he said, could I ask you a question? I told him why, certainly. He said, how does Jennings get the boys to not show any emotion on the floor, to be uh, not make faces when we call fouls, to be completely into playing the basketball game instead of uh, being distracted by things around them, trying to help us officiate, uh, and what have you just he said in all his years i think he said at that time some 18 years he had never seen a team like that that exhibited the sportsmanship that uh, we had in that one game that he had called and that really humbled me to think that uh, you know he would think that much of us to, to mention that to me well, i'm sure it was uh, and of course uh, when you have the Eight state tennis championship time. I'm sure that no one really stands out more, but every year they probably seem just a little bit sweeter for some reason or other, and I'm not sure why. I guess maybe it's because as we get older we keep thinking, boy, this ball may be the last one. <laughs> well, it's really nice. This one will be especially nice because right now we have seven straight state championships, and should we be fortunate enough to win this year, it will be a national record of eight consecutive state championships. We are tied currently with uh, Providence Central in Rhode Island. They also won eight straight, or I'm sorry, seven straight state championships and we're tied with them at the current time. Do you think Jenny, is Jennings really going to hang it up? I think he will. He's, uh, everything that I've known him getting into, when he taught me when I was in high school, uh, he taught math and he taught it 100%. He, he went into it with everything he had. He's coached the last 15 years that way. He goes into it 100%. He doesn't just give it 75%, 80%. He goes into it all the way, and I think he's going to give up coaching now to go into politics. He's uh, interested in uh, in politics, and I think he wants to get into that uh, 100% as opposed to, say, still coaching and splitting his time between politics and coaching. Gary, appreciate you coming by to visit with us. We've been wanting to do it for a long time. We just haven't had the opportunity. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, like Ben. Certainly appreciate it. Okay, Gary Dove, the uh, Senate Fisher of the North Oak Blue Demons, and I'm Glenn May, and we'll be back with more right after this. Tigers on the floor, and we've got the Demons down to our right. And, of course, sitting at the table about this low level, and 
We could get screened off a little bit from time to time. I got Charlie Rice sitting here on my right. Welcome aboard, Charlie. Thanks, Glenn. Good to see you tonight. Top be a real good matchup again tonight. We met. And uh, I look for a real good ball game, probably real close, like the first one that uh, played throughout the transfer. And over on my left, we got that effervescent Bob Graham. Hello, Bob. Hello, Glenn May. And uh, I think this place is running over with people. There are a number of college scouts here. And uh, I'm looking forward to a real good ball game. And I uh, hope that it's a facsimile of the one we saw Friday night because I really enjoyed that game against Parkinson. Oh, you like those blowouts, huh? Oh, I sure do. It just makes it a lot so much easier. And uh, before we end this, the next fellow, uh, <clears throat> we have to tell you, our halftime guest will be Craig Littlepage from UBA. And, of course, uh, Don DeVoe is here in the world. And our next fellow sitting down on the table over here, keeping with the statutes, is Jack Alara. Welcome aboard, Jack. Thank you, Glenn. And, uh, of course, Jack, uh, you expect to see a blowout? No, I don't expect to see a blowout. Okay. All right, we're going to be back with basketball. We got the crew here. We'll be back right after this. Mid-floor right now. Let's see if we can get some quick starting lineups. Charlie, you got Northport. Yes, sure do, Glenn. Starting that tonight. At guard, one of the guards position would be Kenny White. The other guard would be Michael Boyd. At center would be Jesse Fields, Quentin Crenshaw, and George Peoples at the forward. And uh, reserves might be Mark Glenn, Ricky Harmon, Robert Huckleberry, Jody Lutz, William Foster, Dwayne Washington, and Ricky Helm. Okay, Bob, you got some. Uh, you got the uh, Tiger starter. Yes, I sure do, Glenn. The starting center is Jimmy Miller, of course. He's averaging just over 24 points a ball game. At one forward, James Witt averaging just over 15 and a half points a game. At the guard, Mike E's averaging 17 points even on the season. At the other guard, Jeff St. Clair averaging just a little over 8 points a ball game. And at the other forward, Stephon Strain averaging almost 6 points a ball game. And the top reserve, of course, will be David Phillips, Judith Will, and Jeff Adams. Okay, as they're introducing the Tigers, the Tigers are the visitors here tonight. We'll be the visitors on the scoreboard. Tigers wearing blue. The world blue uniforms, and of course, Northbrook will be in the white. And we've got uh, Jeff St. Clair, Mike Eads, Jim Miller, and Jeff Armstrong out right now, and James DeWitt going out to join them. Now we'll wait for the Demons to be introduced, and of course, the crowd. we got a good crowd here tonight, fellas. It's loud, too. Yes, it is. We have a number of uh, signs around that people might be interested in. There's uh, one that says, uh, Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be tigers. I don't know which side put that up. And there's another one that said, uh, something about it's Miller time again or something. I don't know what that means. There's a number of signs all over this, uh, this gymnasium. Well, another one bites the dust somewhere. Yeah. Eight, third, fourth, fourth. Uh, <laughs> Tigers are number one. I can figure that one out. Well, at least most, uh, at least all of them we can see, we can read on the air. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're ready to go for basketball. The officials tonight: George Simons and Bob McLean. And uh, from up in uh, George from McBell County, I think Bob's from over in uh, Wyoming County somewhere. But George Simons on the far floor, on the far side of the floor. Bob standing right here with his back to us. We're right at floor level and. Uh, Hopefully we won't get screened off too much, but hopefully we'll see a good scrambling ball game. Yeah, the Tigers, they are ready. The Tiger cheerleaders on the far side of the floor whooping it up. We're sitting at the scorer's table, and that is on the home side of the Blue Demons here tonight. As the Blue Demon cheerleaders down to our right, the Blue Demon bench to our right, the Tiger bench to our left. As the Demons have broken our huddle, and now the Tigers break our huddle and go out. And the Tigers, they play ball, and... Uh, the Jimmy Miller standing out in the center circle right now, waiting quietly. And is Freddie over here with him tonight, or is Freddie listening at home? Hey, my... I haven't seen him. Uh, I'm Freddie, his grandmother. I haven't seen her. As the tip goes off, controlled by the Demons, as Field picks it up, gets it up four to White, gives it to Crenshaw, puts it up and in good. He is fouled. Crenshaw hits the breakaway bucket quickly for the Demons. And the foul called upon Stephon Strain. That's number one on Stephon, team foul number one on the Tigers, and that'll put Quentin Crenshaw on the free throw line for the Demons. He'll shoot one shot. And the shot is up, and no good. Rebound comes down to the wit of the Tigers. It's the wit, puts it on the floor, moves it to the front, Fort takes it to the right side, starts it down the right side, gives it to St. Clair, top of the key. Jeff 
Backs it out, looks for the offense to Eads. Eads goes to the left side, gets it in the corner to Stephon. Gives it back outside to Eads. To St. Clair, top of the key to Miller, low post, spinning, firing off the glass, got it. As he got Miller on the low post, working on fields, he put it up and in. Two to two, we got a tie ball game with 7.29 in the first quarter. It's Boyd into the front court with it for Northport. And the deep in the corner with it, the people gives it back outside, and we got a whistle and a foul underneath. And it may be on Eads. No, it is on Miller. As Miller called for the foul underneath. I believe that may have been on Mike Eats, uh, Flynn. He's on number 40. Uh, Jimmy Miller. It's on Jimmy. Get that rebound. As Norfolk will end down the ball. They bring it in in the corner to Fields. Fields gives it outside to Boyd. Gives it back to Crenshaw. Crenshaw in the corner. Gives it to Michael Boyd at the corner court. Michael on the dribble with it. In the corner with it to Peoples. Peoples gives it back outside, and they go back to Peoples in the corner. Looks at the bucket. Gives it back outside. Now Boyd will fire from outside off the front end. No good. Rebound to Fields. Fifth move. Comes out to St. Clair. The Tigers out into the front court. St. Clair running foul from behind by Crenshaw. Crenshaw with the foul. Crenshaw running foul from behind by Crenshaw. As St. Clair on the move, he had ease to his right, but Norfolk was right covering. That's number one on Crenshaw, team foul number one on the Demons. And it'll be out to the Tigers on the side court. As Eads will play it in. Eads inbounds it to St. Clair. As Jeff dribbling with it, comes to the near side. Throws it down the left side, looks at the bucket now, holds it overhead. In the corner with it to DeWitt. DeWitt puts it on the floor one time, gives it back to St. Clair, drops it to Miller High Post. Works on Crenshaw, fires up. As Miller goes down the lane with it, puts it up. The Tigers on top, four to two. As Boyd against the press for St. Clair, gets it to the front court. Boyd on the right side, on the dribble with it. Into the corner to People. As People looking underneath, puts it on the floor, gives it back outside to Boyd, and he'll take it to the other side of the floor. Takes it to the left side, quarter court now, looking underneath. Looking for Fields or Crenshaw. As they get it underneath to Kenny White, firing out of pivot. Kenny White gets it for the Demons. Four to four, tie ball game. As the Demons will press, as he's with the ball in the backcourt for the Tigers. Gives it to St. Clair, still in the backcourt as Jeff. Moves it to the front court, to DeWitt. DeWitt goes to the corner, drops it over the step on. Lays it to Miller inside, we got a whistle and a foul underneath. And it may be on the Demons, it is on the Demons, it's on George People. That's number one on People, team foul number two on the Demons. It'll be out for the Tigers, and they'll have it on the baseline under their own bucket. They line them up on the lane, parallel, right side of the lane now. DeWitt will pull the trigger. As DeWitt slips it out into the, to St. Clair, goes to Miller on the high post, spinning the ball off loose, foul called inside. And the foul called on Kenny White of the Demons. That's number one on White, number three on the Demons. They should put Miller on the line to shoot two as he was starting his shooting motion. 6.04 left to play in the first quarter, and they put the bonus light on underneath the gas. Is that right? Is that powerful? No. There's only been three fouls called against four four. It's a four four ball game. As Miller on the line, firing two free throws. The first one is good. He'll have a second one. Five to four. As Miller will have one more. As Jim fires, it's good. Six to four. Tigers up by two. As the Tigers will press, Boyd with the ball in the backcourt, gets it to White, leads it into the front court to Field. Field holds it underneath to Crenshaw, firing out the lane, no good. Rebound. Fought for it, we got a whistle and a foul. Called on Miller, and that's number two on Jim. That's team foul number three on the Tigers. I didn't see Jim getting by the arm, but they said he did. So it'll be out to the Demons. They'll have it on the baseline. Get it for them. As Fields holds it overhead, flips it outside to Michael Boyd. Boyd gives it to Crenshaw in the corner with it. Gives it back outside to Boyd. Works toward the top of the key. Gives it back in the corner to People. Firing off the baseline. In and out, no good. Rebound to Miller. And he is fouled. Oh, so they call a jump ball between Crenshaw and Miller. Crenshaw right. So they'll jump it in the free throw circle. It would be Miller and Quentin Crenshaw. And we got a whistle and a timeout to the Tigers as Ralph Ball is going to question that, and justifiably so. So with timeout on the floor, we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Feeling thrown here as the Tigers getting in foul trouble with Jimmy with the two fouls right now. We've got a six to four score, Tigers on top. And uh, Bob, uh, what do you think? Well, I thought it should have been a foul on Crenshaw, and if the foul, 
previous to that was a foul on Timmy Miller. That certainly was a foul on Crenshaw that instead of a jump ball. I don't know if I could ask Charlie if he agrees or not. I agree with that. <laughs> you know, Glenn, the one thing it's always pointed out about officiating is consistency. And uh, on those two, last two calls we've seen, they have been very inconsistent. But they were made by different officials. The other fellow made the first call, fell on Miller. The other guy made the call on the jump ball. But they still, as a team, they should be consistent in All right, the call. I don't, I don't disagree. Well with each other. Okay, we'll jump it. It's French on Miller. We're ready to go. As the official moves in, Miller standing in a circle. Now he turns around. As the official steps back away, as he's questioning something about the way Jesse Fields was lined up back here. Or I ask Kenny White it is. So now they toss it up, and Miller tips it to St. Clair. St. Clair hit by Boyd. We got a blocking foul called on Michael Boyd. And that's number one on Boyd. Team foul number four on the Demons. It'll be out to the Tigers. As he then bounds it to St. Clair. St. Clair now brings it to the front court. On the dribble with it. Brings it down the left side. Looking underneath. He'll fire from 18 feet off the iron. No good. Rebound. Fought for Brought down by Fields. They got a traveling call. As Fields and White collided. And the traveling call resulted. It'll be out to the Tigers. The side court. Front court. As Jeff St. Clair will inbound it. As Jeff flips it down to Eads. Eads bounced it one time. Gives it back to St. Clair. And he gets a pick from Miller. Gives it to Stephon. Goes down the baseline. Fire. Good. Stephon screen. Eight to four. Tigers are up. As Boyd will bring it to the front court for North Fork. On the dribble with it, left side. Using that right hand. Moves it to Kenny White in the corner. It is field. Into the post to White. Firing over Miller off the iron. No good. We got a whistle and a foul underneath. And I think that's called on uh, Stephon, I believe. It is Stephon. Strain. It's his second foul. And team foul number four on the Tigers. So it'll be out to the Demons on the baseline. As Stephon picks up his second foul. Miller with two, Stephon with two. We got 5-11 left to play in the first quarter. Tigers lead 8-4. As Fields inbounds it. Down low to Kenny White. Goes around Miller, rejects the shot. Out to Eads. Eads into the front court with it. Goes down the lane, fires out of the lane. Off the iron, no good. And we got a charging foul on Eads. That's number one on Eads. Team foul number five on the Tigers. So it'll be out to the Demons. No, it will not be a shooter. It'll be a 1-1. One, one. And that's the fifth team foul on the Demon. 5-0-3 left to play, and North Fork is in the bonus. This is in the first quarter, not out, out in the first half. And that will put Michael Boyd on the free throw line to shoot a 1-1. One 8-4, one. to four, the Tigers are on top. It's kind of hard to believe that we've played less than three minutes in this ball game. As Boyd, ready to fire. He puts it up. It's good. We've got a good crowd here tonight. I don't see any empty seats around anywhere. Balconies are full. And people out to watch a good ball game. Eight to five. The Tigers up by three. With 5-0-3 left to play in the first quarter. As Boyd fires. Good. Eight to six. As St. Clair with the ball in the backcourt. As the Demons will press at half court. As he's still in the backcourt with it. Gives it to Miller in the front court. Leaves it for St. Clair. Goes underneath with it to DeWitt. Almost lost out of bounds. Gets it back to Eads. Firing off the iron. No good. Rebound. Comes to the corner to DeWitt. Puts it back up all the way across. Rebound. Comes down to Northwark as Crenshaw brings it down. Takes it to the front court. On the dribble. Gives it to Field. Top the key. Firing. In and out. No good. Rebound to Eads. It's not close. Picked up by St. Clair. The Tigers control. As Jeff will bring it to the front court for Preston. Starts it toward the right side. Starts it toward the corner. Over overhead, now he'll fire from 18 feet. It's good. Just St. Clair found within. 10 to 6, the Tigers are up. As Kenny White with the ball, gives it to Michael Boyd. Works on St. Clair, gets to the front court with it. Down the right side. Gives it to People, gives it right back to Boyd. As Boyd dribbling outside. Gives it back to People at the corner court. Gives it back to Boyd, top the key. They go to Fields out high on the left side. Brings it back around the horn to people. Firing off the near side. It's off the iron and good. He got iron and glass, but dropped it. Eight to ten. The Tigers lead by two. As Mike Eads with the ball against the Demon Press. Gets it to St. Clair. Into the front court with it to James DeWitt. Goes down. Goes to the corner. Goes to the baseline. Drops it to Miller. Low post. Goes into the lane. Ball down. Miller comes up with it. Puts the shot up. No good. We got a whistle and a three-second call.
So the Tigers turn it over. It'll be North Fork ball in the backcourt. As people gives it to Michael Boyd, and he brings it to the front court. Holds it overhead. Gives it to Peoples near side. Into the corner with it to Crenshaw. Holds it overhead. Gives it back to Peoples on the corner court. Outside with it to Boyd as they try to set the offense again. They're overloading his right side against the Tiger zone. And now Peoples firing. Hits it from 20 feet. George Peoples puts it in, and we got a tie ball game. A 10 all with 3.16 left to play in the first quarter. As Eads moves the ball to the front court against the press for the Tigers. As Eads still dribbling with it. Looking underneath. Gives it to St. Clair. To DeWitt on the baseline to Stephon in the lane to East. We got a three second call. Clint had two consecutive three second calls. Those the kind of well, play. the play was developed for him to be in there, but then the play did not develop. They didn't bring the ball in. 10 to 10, tie ball game as Boyd brings it to the front court for North Fork. To Fields, way outside with it. Brings it around the horn to Peoples. Peoples gives it back to Boyd, top of the key to Fields, firing from 20 feet off the iron. No good, no rebound. Out to Eads, and he didn't give him room, so that's a blocking foul against North Fork. On Jesse Fields. On Kenny White, I believe it is. No, Jesse Fields is right. That's number one on Fields. Team foul number five. Team foul number five. Team foul number five on the Demon. So, St. Clair will shoot a one-on-one, -on -one as Eads uh, will shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. As they tipped him out to St. Clair, they have to give him room to make the turn. He did not have it as he turned around and collided with Jesse Fields. Well, I'm not sure he actually collided. He saw him and stopped, and they both sort of <laughs> fell over. Mike Eads will file the one-on-one. -on -one. He's got the first one up. No good. Comes off the iron. Rebound. Slapped around. Controlled by Northport. As the Tigers missing free throws. As Michael Boyd will bring it to the front court for Northport. Takes it toward the left side. Still dribbling. Brings it back toward the near side to George Peoples. On the corner court. Gives it outside. Back to Peoples. Works it toward the lane, gives it back outside to Boyd. Looks at the bucket, gives it back to people. Starts it toward the baseline, comes in firing from 18 feet, no good rebound to Miller. He is fouled from behind by Quentin Crenshaw. That's number two on Crenshaw, team foul number five, number six on the Demon. And he'll shoot the one and one That'll put Miller on the line to shoot a one and one We got 224 to play in the first quarter. We got a 10-10 ball game. As Norfolk getting some substitutes in, we'll get Rick Harmon checking into the ball game and Mark Glenn. Mark Glenn started in the Princeton tournament uh, all back, what, a month ago? As Michael Boyd and Kenny White check out. And uh, David Phillips will get off the bench and get ready to come in for the Tigers. As, as Miller on the line, he'll fire with the right hand. He's got it on the way. And it's off the back iron, no good. He tips the back outside, but it's picked up by North Fork. Bring it to the front court is Glenn. Mark Glenn comes out firing. Good. Mark Glenn gives the Demons the lead, 12 to 10. With 2.14 to play in the first quarter. As they will press, and DeWitt with the ball now gets it to the front court. Turn and get it to Miller. Has it knocked loose. And the rebound knocked loose and out of bounds. It'll be Tiger Ball. But boy, there was all kinds of fouls to be called right there. There wasn't any of them called. As Mark Glenn on the floor for the Demons and uh, also on the floor right now, George Peoples are both up now. I saw Miller really push on that one, did you? Sure did. Mm. So the Tigers will have it on the baseline. As the whip will inbound it. Now the official is checking with Mark Glenn of the Demons to see if he's all right. He says he's all right. So James DeWitt will inbound it for the Tigers because we got David Phillips in the ball game. As Eve to St. Clair to Phillips, and we got a traveling call. I think it's going to be very interesting, the number of Princeton turnovers at the end of the first quarter. So North Park, bring it to the offense now. Mark Glenn with the ball, brings it to the front court. Top the key with it, holds it up. As they go to Crenshaw, high post, firing, no good. Rebound to Miller, he went way above the iron to pull it down. Flips it out to Eads, on the break. Works on Glenn, goes out, has the ball knocked loose and out of bounds. It'll be Tiger ball. As the Tigers will play it on the baseline, 12 to 10, the Tigers trailing by two. As the Witt will inbound it. As they bring it into Eads, outside the St. Clair. They come around to the Witt on the near side, firing from way outside, good. From 20 feet, James DeWitt ties it up at 12-12 with a minute 38 to play in the first quarter. As Mark Glenn brings it to the front court on the dribble to the right side to Peoples. 
Back to Glenn. Ball knocked loose. It's slipped loose. Glenn picks it up. Starts it down towards the top of the key. The Peoples on the right side. Looking inside. Tigers in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. As Peoples with the ball. Gives it back outside to Glenn. Works inside. Still picks him up. Gives it back outside. Now they go across the floor with it to Crenshaw. Drive. Puts it up. Runs over Miller. No call on. Fields rebound. Good. And Fields rebounded that with Miller lying on the floor. 14-12. to The Tigers are trailing. As the wick gets the ball, as Eve gets the ball into the front court, gets it to the wick. The wick starts it across the lane. Now he'll fire. Good. As the wick hits it from 12 feet. 14 to 14 with 55 seconds to play. As Fields leaves the ball for George Peoples. Peoples into the front court, gives it to Mark Glenn, and they'll set it up and play for one shot. As the Tigers in a 1 3 1 zone. So as St. Clair way out front on that zone now, coming out to give pressure to him. With the ball is Mark Glenn of North Park. Cross court with it to Jesse Fields. In the corner to Crenshaw. Gives it back outside. They come to Peoples on the near side. As Peoples at the corner court. Gives it back outside to Glenn and back to Peoples. As they're just waiting on a clock to run down. We've got 25 seconds on it right now. They'll work it down to about 10 and then try their shot. As Glenn with the ball out front. Cross court with it to Fields. Fields back to Glenn. As they got Crenshaw on the high post. And Peoples on the right side. As Glenn with the ball for the court, lifts underneath. Now he drops it to Crenshaw on the high post. They go to Fields. He'll fire from 18 feet. No good. Rebound pulled down by St. Clair. Throws it up court. Picked up by DeWitt with two seconds. DeWitt into the lane. Firing. Oh, good. Foot the the first quarter of play. The Preston Tigers, 14. The North Fork Blue Demons, 14. And we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Let me bring it back. We're back at uh, Brushport Armory in the first uh, quarter of Christmas at six field goals. North Fork six field goals. Christmas two or three at the foul line. North Fork two or three at the foul line. Jimmy Miller, Stephon Strain, and Quentin Crenshaw all have two fouls in that first uh, quarter. Jimmy Miller throws six points to win four. And Charlie, do you have the, uh, I think the turnovers are going to be the key, key element. Yeah, sure do, uh, Bob. Uh, Vince committed four turnovers that quarter, and they pulled down eight rebounds, and they shot 60%, made six out of ten, so that's pretty good shooting. But the turnovers there, right once fell about halfway through the quarter, they made three or four turnovers right in front. Jack, do you have North Fork? Let me see this. Uh, for North Fork, uh, they were six of 17 from the foul line from the field goal. And uh, seven rebounds. The Chris Max had one more rebound, and they only had two turnovers, I believe, compared to four. four. Chris had four turnovers. All right, we're ready for second quarter action. 14 to 14, and we got a dandy going here. And if you ain't here, you're missing a good one. Is that right? Sure, it's been a real good ball game. Oh, yeah. Those enthusiastically sides. played. Right. Enthusiastically cheered. That's right. Enthusiastically officiated. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't know about that one, <laughs> Okay, we'll have Miller in the jump, and we'll get uh, Fields in the jump again. Here's Jesse Fields. Miller at 6'7", and Fields at about 6'5 and a half. Fields is in, waiting on Miller. Miller moves in now, waiting on the official and the tip. Knocked around, controlled by the Tigers. He picks it up, goes down, fires off the glass, got it. As he puts the Tigers up, 16 to 14. And into the ball game, Mark Glenn will bring it to the front court for North Fork. He turns around, gives it to George Peoples, back to Glenn. He's on the point position now to Glenn as he walks it to the near side. The Seals, Seals on the corner court left side, looking underneath. Backs his way in against the wedge. Gives it back to Glenn. Firing from outside off the iron, no good. We got a whistle on a foul. And that may be Fields over where he's back. And if it is, it is. It is number 42. It is. That's number two on field. And that'll put Eads on the line. He'll shoot a one and one As Eads in for rebounding at good position, holding Fields off the board. Eads giving up a little bit of size there, though, wasn't he? Sure was. So we'll have Mike Eads, Michael Earl Eads, that is, on the free throw line for the Tigers. 16 to 14. Tigers enjoying a lead with 7.37 left to play in the first half. As Mike Eads. Ready, he'll fire with the right hand. It's on the way. It's good. He'll have a second attempt. We on the season. Uh, Mike Eaton hit 24 of 31 from the foul line for 77.4%. And I did knock on some wood. As he's ready to fire again. He fires. It's good. 18 to 14. The Tigers out by four now. As Kenny White with the ball for the Demons into the front court. The people's driving right side. Puts it up good. 
18 to 16 as the Demons fast breaking. They get the bucket as St. Clair moves it back to the front court to Phillips. Phillips goes to the corner with it. Tries to get it to ease. It's intercepted. Picked up by the Demons. Is bringing it out as Mark Glenn into the front court. Going to need with the people, but he is followed by David Phillips. And there wasn't much doubt that Phillips got him. That's number one on Phillips. And team foul number six on the Tigers. As we'll get Stephon back in the ball game for the Tigers. Now Stephon Strange comes back in. As David Phillips will get a chance to get your breathing. 18 to 16. Tigers lead by two. However, we've got George People from the free throw line for the Demons. He's firing. It's good. He'll have a second. As he'll have one more now. 18 to 17 with 7.15 left to play in the first half. As people's on the line. Fires. Off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled out by Miller. Looking for help. Gets it out to Eves. Eves into the front floor with it. Looks underneath. Drives the baseline. Puts it up. The ball rejected by Fields. They got a whistle and a foul on Fields. That's number three on Fields. And that'll put Eves on the line. As Fields got him with a leg as he went by him. And that may get Fields a chance to take a rest, you reckon? Probably will. Haven't seen any mo movement yet. He's still got seven minutes left in this quarter, second quarter. A lot of time left in this ball game. Sure is. Mike Eads will be on the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll fire one on one. With 7.06 to play in the first half, Eads fired. Good. He'll have a second one. 19 to 17. Tigers out by two. As Mike will have one more shot at it. As he's five. It's good. 20 to 17. Tigers up by three. As the Demons bring it to the front court. Peoples with the ball. Gives it to Crenshaw. Crenshaw goes to the top of the key. Gives it back outside to Gwen. As Mark works it to the corner. Gives it to Peoples. Knocks loose. And we got a whistle on a foul. Called on E. That's number two on E. And getting into the ball game for Norfolk will be Harmon. And that will probably, he probably went from Fields, I imagine, won't he? Yeah, Fields will come out. As we'll have George Peoples on the free throw line for the Demons, and he'll be shooting a one-on-one. Peoples so far tonight is one for two for the foul As Peoples fires, it's good. 20 to 18. The Tigers are leading by two. As people fire, it's off the eye, no good ball, tipped around, knocks out of bounds, and it's demon ball. There's nobody can get the handle on it, and it'll be out to the blue demon. As Crenshaw will inbound it, 20 to 18, the Tigers are leading by two right now. As Crenshaw. Brings it in underneath to Washington, to White, taken away by St. Clair, trying to get it outside, throws it out, out of bounds. As St. Clair in a bind with about three players on him, trying to flip it over to Miller, lost it. And it will goes out of bounds, it'll be out to the Demons again. As Crenshaw will end out a game. He gives it inbound to Mark Glenn. Glenn back the way in, starts to shot up, it's knocked loose by St. Clair, we got a whistle and a traveling call. Now, St. Clair created that turnover by putting a hand on the ball. He sure did. So far tonight, yes, St. Clair's played an excellent defensive ball game. 20 to 18, Tigers up by two. The Tigers on the attack as St. Clair brings it to the front court, working against Mark Glenn. They drop it down deep to Stephon, goes under and puts a his foul, and that foul will be called on George Peoples. That's number two on Peoples. And that'll put Stephon on the line, he'll shoot two shots. Oh, he should have got a bucket there. Sure Three-point play would be awful good. Of course, when a guy hits you like that, it's all hard to put it in the basket, but it's been just not nice. it went in. He was wide up for it. If we ever get some cooperation out of Chunky, we get credit for that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Stephon on the line now to shoot two. He's ready. First one's on the way. It's good. He'll have a second one. 21 to 18. The Tigers are up by three. We've got 643 left to play in the first half. As Stephon fires, good. 22 to 18. As Mark Glenn will bring it to the front court for the Demons. Gives it to Kenny White. White into the corner with it to Peoples. Back outside to Glenn. Looking underneath, back to Peoples. Works it toward the corner, gives it back outside to Glenn, and they go back to Peoples again as they 
cannot get it in against the Tiger zone right now. They go full forward with the Crenshaw. Crenshaw brings it back around. They come to people. Firing from outside. It's off the back iron, off the top of the board. Rebound comes out underneath. And I don't know what's going on. We got a traveling call now on North Fork. Is that ball went out of bounds? That ball rolled down the back of the backboard. Didn't yes, it? it did. And that ball should have been out of bounds to Princeton long before it ever was. And North Fork wants a timeout because Coach Jennings wasn't going to tell him about it. So it's 6:15 left to play in the first half. Princeton 22, North Fork 18. We'll be back right after this. Bob, you want to debate the case on that one? No, sir. That was a, that was a chain of circumstances that we we could have won one and lost the next one. <laughs> so I'm just tickled to death with a walking call. I can't make out what you're saying, Jack. What are you saying? Out of bounds. Well, he couldn't have had a goal sitting there. wasn't a shot up. Now, he could have had a technical foul. He could have had a technical foul because he was in the rim. As Jim was up on the rim, see. But the ball was already out of play. And see, there was no chance for the ball to go in there. It could be no goal sending shot. It's got to have a chance of going in before you can get a goal sending. The ball had already went past the rim and on the way somewhere else. So that's what, anyway, the official didn't, and so the official chose to call nothing. So the official chose to call nothing, and maybe that's the best way. Anyway, we got a traveling call in on the Blue Demons, so now it's Tiger ball out of bounds. So the Tiger's ready to go. The Wit will have bounded from the back court as the Demons will press. As the Wit inbounded to Eves, Eves works it to the front court, and the Demons release the press. Eves comes down, works the baseline, fade away, in, good. 24 to 18, the Tiger's up by six now. As the Demons bring it back to the offense, Harmon with the ball on the far side, gives it to Mark Glenn. Two people, people on the corner court, back to Glenn, firing on top of the key, it's on the iron, off the iron, no good, rebound comes down, St. Clair's got it for the Tigers. And St. Clair works his way out of trouble, gets it to Miller in the back court to Eden, and the Tigers come to the front court, we got a traveling call. Now, why didn't we get a technical on that? The guy was trying to jam the rebound and grab the rim. He didn't he, Chunky? <laughs> I don't think there's any questions the man had to rim. As Mark Glenn brings it to the front court for the Demon. Moves it to the left side. To Harmon. Gives it back to Glenn. They come to Peoples on the near side. Gives it back to Glenn. They go to Crenshaw. Firing out of the corner. to Whit got a piece of it on a block shot. We've got a whistle and a foul underneath. Now, is that on Miller? No. Yes, it is. Hey. That's number three on Jim. That's it. Bad call. That's a terrible <laughs> call. Jimmy had to establish Crenshaw came through there and just, well, not Crenshaw, but uh, White came through there, knocked Jimmy out of the way, and the foul was called on Jimmy. That'll put Jimmy White on the free throw line for the Demons. And he'll shoot one, he'll shoot a one and one, I guess. As White fires, it is on the iron and good. 24 to 19, and the Tigers want a timeout. So with 5.33 left to play in the first half, it is best of 24. Going for 19, we'll be back right after this. Team Tigers up, and we'll get Miller out of the ball game. We get Phillips in the place right now. The Tigers down foul trouble. Jimmy Miller's got his turn. Of course, Jesse Fields got three for Northport. 5.33 left to play in the first half. 24-19, Tigers up. Now, somebody make a note that the Tigers are leading right now when Miller goes out with 5.33 to play, and let's see what happens. And the score. I've got it, 24-19, okay. Now we're ready to go as the Divas are back on the floor right now. The Tigers coming out right now. We've got DeWitt, Phillips, Eade, Strain, and St. Clair. Kenny White on the free throw line for the Demons. He'll shoot one show. He's got one more shot. As White says he's ready. And the official hands him the ball. As White fires, it's good. 24 to 20. The Tigers now leading by four. The Wit moves the ball to the front court for the Tigers. Brings it down the right side. White uh, wrist across the forehead to wipe the sweat off and gives it to Eads as Mike Eads comes back outside. They work the weave, gives it to St. Clair. Jeff on the point position now, moves it toward the left side to Eads. He's on the wing, looking underneath. They've got Phillips on the high post. They've got the DeWitt on the wing the other side. He is firing from way outside. Good. James DeWitt from 25 feet is powered it in. 26 to 20, the Tigers up. As Mark Glenn brings it back to the front court for North Fork. 
Goes across court with it to Harmon. Harmon back to Glenn. The people on the near side. The Phillips picked him up. Goes back outside to Glenn. And they go to Kenny White on the high post. He can't get anything open. They should have a three-second call. We got a three-second call. Boy, it was long time coming. Only six to 20. The Tigers leading by six with 4.49 to play in the first half. As the Demons will press. These with the ball in the backcourt. Working against the press. Brings it to the front court on the dribble. Leaves it for St. Clair and Jeff on the point position now. Looking underneath. Starts it toward the right side. They get Eads out on the wing as Mike looks. Goes toward the baseline. The Phillips on the high post goes underneath. We got a whip on a foul. And Kimmy White, I believe, called for the foul on Phillips as he was driving. And the foul call on Kenny White. And that's number two on Kenny White. And it'll put David Phillips on the line. He'll shoot a one and one. We got 432 left to play in the first half. The Tigers leading 26 to 20. On the season, David Phillips is hitting 25% of his uh, free throw opportunities, but he really hasn't had a great number of opportunities. As Phillips ready, fires off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by George Peoples of Northport. Into the front court with it, Peoples on the dribble. To the right side to Mark Glenn. Glenn directs the traffic, gives it back outside to Peoples. He gives it back to Glenn as he'll start the offense from out top now. To the left side to Harmon, goes down, drives, fires. Comes off the iron, no good. Rebound, tips around, pulled down by Phillips. Outlet pass going by Glenn. And we got a whistle and a foul on St. Clair. And you're right, there was a double dribble, but the foul was called with St. Clair. That's number one on Jeff. And Jeff knew he was reaching in. If Jeff hadn't been reaching in, we would have probably got a double dribble call. 4-11 left to play in the... That's 26-20. Okay, they called a foul on George Peoples. He fouled Eads on the drive as he was running in the lane. That's number three on Peoples. And into the ball game is Jeff Adams for the Tigers, and David Phillips comes out. And that'll put Eads on the line to shoot a one-and-one. One. Coming into the ball game for Norfolk right now will be William Foster. As we'll have Eads on the line to shoot a one-and-one. 26-20, one. to 20, we got four minutes to play in the first half. As Eads on the line right now. Fires the first one. It's good. He'll have a second one. Mike cracks his free throw as he backs away there to rest. He cracks the wrist flip. He moves back up. He's ready. He fires. It comes off the side iron. No good. Rebound. Pulled down by the Demon. As they clear it out to Kenny White. Fight into the front court with it for Northport. Toward the right side. Looks toward the corner. Picks it up now. Holds the dribble. And he gives it outside to Foster. And Foster tops the key with it. Looking inside. Goes to the left side with it to Harmon. Harmon looking inside. Gives it back to Foster. Top of the key. Brings it toward the near side. Just take it away out there. St. Clair comes up with a seal. Jeff on the move. In the front court. Picks up. Fires out of the lane. No good. Rebound. Front court goes to the floor. Picked up by North Fork. As Foster picks it up. He clears it out into the back court to Mark Glenn. Glenn into the front court with it. Turns it toward the right side. Picks it up. Gives it to Foster. Top of the key. And they get it to Harmon. Harmon almost knocks it loose. As well. Goes to the baseline, fires, no good. Rebound put up by Harmon, no good. Step on, really trying to clear it, and he is fouled. And who's it on? Crenshaw, please. Foul is on Crenshaw, and that's number three on Crenshaw. Please, we have a situation now where Jesse Fields has three fouls, George Peoples has three fouls, Quentin Crenshaw has three fouls, with 3.16 to go in the second quarter. You see, Step on skying. Yes, he was. He was way over that rim, and... and uh, very dominant on the board getting that rebound. Uh, Stefan is on the free throw line now. Foul by Crenshaw on the rebound. Stefan will shoot a one and one. He fires the first one. It is good. And it's all the time surprising when that ball drops in the net. Uh, oh, Stefan's a good free throw shooter, but he just surprises me. Uh, checking in the ball game for Norfolk now is Jody Lusk. Coming out will be Crenshaw. Craig, uh, Craig Littlepage over the far side. Go over and introduce yourself first. That's Craig. Uh, Stephon fires again. It's good. 
Into the front court with it is Dorfor, trailing by nine with the Tigers right now. Harmon with the ball. The Lusk in the corner. Gives it back outside to Foster. Bring it around the horn to Mark Glenn. Starts it towards the right side. Picks it up. And Stephon's playing a lot of defense. As they go around the horn to Harmon, trying to outside. Somebody got a piece of it. DeWitt blocked it. And they called a foul on DeWitt. Now DeWitt was five feet away from him. And that's number one on James DeWitt. And that will put on the free throw line Ricky Harmon for the Demons. You know, Glenn, there, there are a lot of factors in this ball game, but one of them has to be, I think, the excellent defense that Princeton has played up until this point. Goldsport has had trouble getting that ball inside. They've had to work it around the perimeter, and the defense Princeton has played up until this point has been outstanding. The free throw attempt by Ricky Harmon, first one is no good. He'll have a second one. Do you concur? I think Princeton's defense is the, is the difference right now. Harmon fires again, it's good. 29 to 21. As St. Clair brings it to the front court for the Tigers, working against the press by Foster to the right side to Eads. He's on the wing, holds the ball in one hand. They got DeWitt on the high post, firing out of the post off the iron, no good. Rebound in the lane. DeWitt puts it up. We got a traveling call. As DeWitt and St. Clair had their hand on the ball at the same time. So Michael Boyd comes back into the ball game for the Demons right now. Checking out will be William Foster. So Michael Boyd will bring it to the front court for the Demons. 29 to 21. The Tigers leading by eight. We got 239 to play in the first half. As Michael Boyd driven with them to the right side. The Tigers in that 1-3-1 zone, and this is a very mobile zone. As Boyd with it in the corner, brings it outside to Glenn. To Boyd, deep in the corner. As they drop it underneath to White, goes down the lane to Witt, got a piece of that shot, tipped it out as the Witt tipped the rebound out to St. Clair. St. Clair to the front court with it, to Eads. And we got a traveling call as we let Mark Glenn jump in front of him to cut him off to create the travel. I believe it was. It was. Yeah. So a fine defensive play by Mark Glenn. 29 to 21. It's going to be interesting because Northbrook at this point does not have their, their big people in there to go to in, inside. So it's going to be interesting to see who they do go to. They'll go to Kenny White. As Michael Boyd gives it to White on a high post. Goes across the left. Lust goes under fire. Good. Jody Lust hits it for Northbrook. 29 to 23. As Eads brings it to the front court for the Tigers as the Tigers lead by six. As Eads will fire from 18 feet. Good. Pounds at home, 31 to 23. The Tigers up by eight with a minute 48 to play in the first half. As Mark Glenn brings it to the front court for Northport, to Michael Boyd on the near side, goes toward the baseline, firing from way outside, good. Michael Boyd brings the Demons within six. As he's working with the behind the back dribble, gets around Lusk into the front court as Boyd heads him off. He's still on the dribble with it. Dropping it to DeWitt in the corner, DeWitt. Now he'll fire from 20 feet. In and out, no good. Rebound, wrapped around, picked up by Lusk over the Demon. Gets it out to Michael, to Glenn. Mark Glenn into the front court, behind the bike pass, throws it out of bounds, and they say one of the Tigers kicks it. It'll be North Fork ball as they face St. Clair, hit it with his foot. Glenn, while we're waiting on his inbound play, uh, Mike Eads has 11 points all in this second quarter. Inbounding it for the Demons will be Harmon. As he puts it overhead, puts it way outside to Michael Boyd. Boyd goes to the top of the key, looks at the bucket. St. Clair surrounds him out there as he finally gets the pass over to Mark Glenn. Glenn brings it across the top of the key to the near side. Flips it to Boyd, firing from 20 feet left side, good. Michael Boyd brings the Demons to 27. So within a four points of the Tigers, St. Clair drives, takes it down the way, puts it up and in. St. Clair comes back for the Tigers. 33 to 27, the Tigers up. 50 seconds to play in the first half as Mark Glenn with the ball for Northport. Gives it to Michael Boyd. Boyd on the right side. Looks at the clock, dribbling. Everyone spread it out, play for one shot. 40 seconds to play in the first half. As Michael Boyd standing outside, holding the ball in. Mark Glenn passes back and forth. Now they go to Jody Love as Boyd directs some traffic. We've got 27 seconds in the first half, 33 to 27, Tigers up, and now Boyd starts to move with 23 seconds, now he backs it back out, as they're holding for the last shot, Mark Glenn with the ball in the corner, to Mike Boyd, back to Glenn, as Glenn comes out, goes across the top of the key to the point position, they go to Harmon, Harmon on the wing left side, now they come back to Boyd on the near side, Stephon cuts him off, he goes to the baseline fire, the shot is blocked by Adams. And we got a whistle the foul underneath as the ball flipped around, picked up by Lusk, and I think Adams foul Lusk. It is on Jeff Adams. That's number one on Jeff. 
And that will put Jody Lusk on the free throw line for the Blue Demons. 33-27. We got three seconds up to play in the first half. The Tigers are leading by six. As what? Fires with a right hand. It's good. Boy, he got it off the glass of him. I didn't think it had any chance of going. But it did. And that's what counts. So he'll get another one. 33 to 28. As Lux ready. He fires. That's good. 33 to 29 with three seconds as the witch. Inbound it to St. Clair. The E's in the front court trying from way outside, no good. But at the end of the first half of play, the Princeton Tigers with 33 points. The North Fork Blue Demons with 29 points. And then that second quarter, North Fork had 15 points, while the Tigers came up with 19 big ones. I'm Glenn Matt, the Brush Fork Armory halftime scores. Princeton 33, North Fork 29. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back at the Armory. Halftime score, 33 to 29, as the Tigers leading the Demons, as the Tigers had 14 points and 15 points. A check at Norfolk had 14 in the first quarter, 15 in the second. Preston had 14 in the first, 19 in the second. We'll be back with all the stats and everything. Uh, Charlie, are you ready right now? Yeah, sure. Okay, right. give them to us. Okay, for Princeton in the first half, we'll put they made 11 out of 20 for 55 percent. They pulled down 15 rebounds and committed 10 turnovers. So it's been a real, real fast-paced ball game, but. Uh, Princeton's playing pretty good defense, Glenn, I think. Playing I think one, that's three, true. One. And we'll be back with the individual stats. First West Falls for this message. We're back at Brush Fork Army at halftime. It's Princeton 33, North Fork 29. Individual statistics in the first half. One of the key factors is going to be the foul situation. Mills has one field goal for two points and three personal fouls. Mark Glenn has one field goal, 0 for 1 at the foul line, two points. Kenny White has one field goal, two of two at the foul line, four points. George Peoples has three field goals, two of four from the foul line, eight points, and three personal fouls. George Peoples is their high score in the first half. Quentin Crenshaw has three personal fouls. He has one field goal, 0 for 1 at the foul line, two points. Ricky Harmon came in. He was one of two at the foul line for one point. Uh, Mike Boyd, who started the ball game in place of Mark Glenn, had two field goals, two of two at the foul line, six points. And Lusk, who came in uh, and played uh, in that second quarter, had one field goal, two of two at the foul line, four points. For North Fork, on the half, they had ten field goals, nine of 13 from the foul line. For Princeton, Mike East came in in the first quarter, missed his only free throw opportunity, but in the second quarter, he had three field goals, five of seven at the foul line, 11 points. Jeff St. Clair, who was a demon on defense, uh, if you can excuse that expression, had two field goals for four points. James DeWitt had three field goals, most of them from downtown for six points. Stephon Strain had one field goal, a perfect four of four at the foul line, six points. Jimmy Miller had two field goals, two of three at the foul line, six points. And, of course, Jimmy picked up three personal fouls with uh, just, over four, just over five minutes to go in the first half. Jimmy, David Phillips came in. He was 0 of 1 at the foul line, no points. They have Eaton's 11, and uh, he's the high score. And we will be back at the Brush Fork Armory after these minutes. Score of the Princeton Tigers 33 over top of the North Fork Blue Demons under head coach Jennings Boyd. Score 33 to 29. And, I'm, of course, I'm Craig Mann. Alongside, I've got the assistant coach of the Virginia Cavaliers, Coach Craig Littlepage. And first of all, Coach, we want to welcome you aboard and congratulate you on your brand new AP rating. Well, we're very pleased with it. Uh, uh, it took a long time to get there, and uh, hopefully we can stay there for quite a while. And uh, what really counts is being there at the end of the season when the NCAA finals are done. For those of, uh, of you in the listening audience that aren't aware of what we're talking about, Virginia and the, and the new ratings released this morning, is that right? Or uh, Last yesterday? night they were actually last released. Night Virginia, the Cavaliers tied to first place with the Oregon State uh, Beavers. Beavers. Is that right? right? Oregon State and Virginia tied for the number one honors in the country, according to the AP poll. And I was uh, able to watch you guys take Ohio State to the cleaners very, the other day, and I must say I was very much impressed with your big man. Well, Ralph Sampson is just an exceptional talent, and he's the kind of player that comes along once in a, a coach's lifetime. Uh, uh, we're just very pleased with his progress as a player, as a person, and he's obviously meant a great deal to our program, the elevation of our program to a nationally ranked uh, situation, and uh, uh, hopefully he can continue his play as well as uh, the rest of the guys can continue their fine play for the remainder of the season. 
we in this area like college basketball, and especially the ACC. Right. And we also feel that here in the southern part of West Virginia, we have the ACC of high school basketball. Well, there's no question that there's great high school basketball play in this area. I've had the opportunity to watch uh, Princeton High School on uh, a number of occasions this year, and I've, I've seen them play over the last couple of years, so I'm more familiar with their program than I am some of the others, but I'm aware of the, tr the great tradition of North Fork. Uh, Coach Boyd has had great players and great teams throughout the years, and uh, this is just a, a great area for high school basketball. You're in the area looking over some of our talent. What do you, that what do you think about it? Well, we're primarily uh, looking at Jimmy Miller, who's a senior this year, and uh, for obvious reasons, he's a, an excellent player, an excellent young man, a very good student, and I project him as being uh, uh, just a very fine college player as well. We, uh, of course, you have the Princeton Tigers with the fine talent, but they play well as a team also. I mean, we don't get a chance to see other high school teams, which I'm sure you do. How did the Tigers fare up against other high schools? Well, I, I think that they're a very good high school team. It's, it's always difficult to, to compare high school teams uh, from different geographic areas or even in the same geographic areas until you see them uh, both, both teams on the same floor. But I think as far as a 12-man a, a team, the Princeton team is one of the, the finer high schools in the country. Uh, I think they have a, a, a team that can put 20 points on the board in any one of four positions out of their starters. Uh, they have good leadership in uh, Jeff St. Clair. Uh, they have an exceptional perimeter game with uh, uh, James DeWitt, and uh, Mike Gibbs is also a, a streak shooter. And obviously Jim Miller is a, a dominating rebounder and defender, as well as a very good scorer. All righty, we're back at the Brushport National Guard. I'm Ray Willie back to talk a little bit more with head coach, assistant coach from the University of Virginia, Craig Littlepage, in just a moment. I gave you a promotion there. Okay. We're back at the Brush Fork National Guard Armory, and I've got alongside the assistant coach of the Virginia Cavaliers, Coach Craig Littlepage. And, Coach, before we let you go, we, want, we again want to congratulate you on your fine season so far. We want to wish you the best of luck throughout the remainder of the season, and we look to see you representing the ACC and the NCAA this year. Well, Craig, I appreciate that, and uh, I, I think if we're able to avoid any kind of uh, crippling injuries to uh, key players, and if our young men continue to, to show the kind of enthusiasm and, uh, and interest in the game as they have through 16 games, and there's no telling how far this team can go. Uh, they're just a fine group of young men and uh, a fine group of people to work with and be around, and uh, for their sake, I hope that uh, we do get an NCAA bid, and uh, hopefully we can represent the ACC and the University of Virginia very well if that does come to pass. Coach Little Page, we wish you the best of luck, and we thank you so much for Thank you very much, Craig, for having me in. All righty. We'll be back with the remainder of the halftime show and the second half tip-off right after this. Hey, we're back here at the Armory and Ball. We're live, and it's noisy, and I got my mic way up too high. Let me shut this dude down a little bit. And what, what are you pushing for? Uh, Jack Larry, you got some stats over there for us. What do you got? Can they hear me? Can yeah. you hear me? Okay. All right, North Fork was 10 of 32 from the field for 31% in the first half. They had 18 rebounds and six turnovers. Uh, they had a dry spell there in the second quarter where they couldn't buy a bucket. They had some good shots, couldn't put it in. North Preston uh, built up the lead and held them off at the end of the, end of the, end of the half to uh, hold a four-point lead. Okay, Charlie, you want to counteract that some of the shooting stats of the Tigers? Tigers? Yeah, for Princeton there in the first quarter, the first half, page 11, 20, 55%, they pulled down 15 rebounds and committed 10 turnovers. I think the key to this ball game in the first half is holding Norfolk to 29 points. That's probably, uh, nobody has done it this year so far, and uh, they're probably averaging, Norfolk's probably averaging pretty close to 20 points a uh, quarter, much less. 29 for a half, don't you think, Glenn? I think that's true. I think the Tiger defense has been uh, very instrumental in this thing. Well, it's noisy in here now. It's smoky. You see a layer of smoke come across the <laughs> So, anyway, the Tigers, we're ready to start the second half. At 33 to 29, the Tigers are enjoying a four point halftime advantage. As the Demons had 14 points in the first quarter, that did the Tigers, but in the second quarter, the Tigers cut out for 19 points, while the Demons could only get 15. Glenn, you might want to turn your uh, this up just a little bit because I'm having trouble hearing you now. Is well, if I do, I bit? overload this thing too much. Can you hear me yet? I can hear you well enough. Well enough. Okay. We're in business. All right. 
as the Tigers on the floor will have Miller now to jump against Fields. Fields is in waiting. Miller moves in and it's off the air. Miller tips the feed. As the Tigers control, the Tigers go to the offense starting the second half. St. Clair with the ball now. Top the key with it. To the right side of the wind in the corner. They go to Miller on the low post baseline. Turning, firing. Off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Fields of Northport. Gets it outside to Boyd. Boyd into the front court with it. Gives it to the near side to Peoples. Peoples leaves it for Fields. They go to Crenshaw, back to Fields underneath the ball, goes to the floor, picked up by Fields, puts it up, no good, Fields rebound, and Fields hits the floor very hard. We got a traveling. No clue, they call a foul on Jimmy Miller. They call a foul. Miller was lying flat of his back. Uh, and a foul called on Jimmy Miller, and Fields was on the floor as he may be injured as he stepped on Miller, and they called a foul on Miller. And uh, we'll get Jeff Adams off the bench to go in for the Tigers. That was a terrible call. Jimmy Miller was down on the floor, and... Uh, he, there was no way he could get out of the way. Well, he should have had a jump ball call way before he got that ball. Fields is up now, moving around. He's all right. As Adams comes in, Miller comes out. As Fields will down the floor at Northport. He gets it in the corner to Crenshaw. There's a back outside to Michael Boyd. And now they'll set the offense. And Michael Boyd on the dribble with it. Holds it high overhead. Gets it to Fields on the quarter court. Gives it back to Boyd, top of the key, back to Fields on the wing. As Fields starts to toward the lane, back to the round, gives it to Boyd. Boyd starts to toward the other side. And he gets it to Peoples. Peoples gives it back to Boyd, and he goes back to Peoples in the corner with it. Peoples gives it right back outside. Back to Fields, firing from the side of the key, good. Jesse Fields from 18 feet puts it in. 33 to 31. The Tiger lead cut to two now. With 704 to play in the third quarter. And St. Clair takes it to the front court for the Tigers. To the wit, firing out of the corner. Good. James the wit. Hits it from 18 to 20 feet. 35 to 31. As Boyd will bring it back to the front court for Northport. To the right side. Two people firing off the iron. No good. Tips up and in by Fields. Jesse Fields puts it back up and in for Northport. As he takes it to the front court for the Tigers. Looking underneath, gives it back to St. Clair, top of the key. To Eves, on the quarter court, goes for the lane. We've got a whistle and a foul, and it's called on Kenny White. That's number three on White. Team foul number one on the Demons. It'll be out of bounds to the Tigers, as Eves will inbound it on the far side. we got 6.31 to play in the third quarter. 35 to 33, the Tigers lead by two. As Jeff St. Clair with the ball for Princeton. At the quarter court, he'll fire from 20 feet. It's off the back iron, no good. Rebound comes out. To Boyd up north for into the front court as he heads him off. As Boyd circles and now takes it to the front court to Peoples on the right side. Gives it back to Boyd. Back to Peoples. He's at the corner court. Boyd top of the key. As Peoples starts it toward the corner. Gives it back outside. And they come to the near side. The field takes the shot. Gives it back to Peoples. Peoples loses the control. Runs it down over by the line. Gives it to Michael Boyd. As Boyd runs the offense from outside. The Fields on the wing. As Fields looking underneath, holding the ball, now starts it toward the quarter. Backs in, drops it underneath to Crenshaw. Goes across the lane on Adams. We got it. We should have traveling. Do we have traveling? We did get three traveling. Seconds. It was a three-second call, but it could have been traveling. As the Demons turn it over to the Tigers, 33 to 31, with 5.51 to play in the third quarter. Tigers up by two. As St. Clair will bring it to the front court and directing traffic on the Tigers. To the right side to the wind. He's on the wing, looking underneath right now. Get the two, Stephon, on the baseline. As Stephon drives the baseline, fires off the baseline. On the iron, no good. Rebound, cut around, and knocked out of bounds. They call it off the Tigers. It'll be Northport ball. The inbound it will be Crenshaw of Northport. Gives it to Boyd. And Michael will take it to the front court. To the right side, the people. Back to Boyd, top of the key. To the left side, the field. Field, good round, flying. Off the iron, no good. Rebound comes out to step on screen of the Tigers. Out to St. Clair. Jeff into the front with a D. D starts it to the lane. Back to round Crenshaw. Fires over Crenshaw. Good. As D puts it in. 37 to 33. The Tigers up by four with 5.09 to play in the third quarter. As Michael Boyd takes it to the front court for Northport. To the left side, to Fields. Back to Boyd. They go to Peoples and around the horn with it. At Peoples, in the corner, two fields on the right side, back to Peoples at the quarter court. Now he'll fire from 18 feet, it's good. 37-35, Tigers leading by two with 4.45 to play in the third quarter. As Jeff St. Clair into the front court to the wet, he'll fire from 20 feet, he is fouled by Quentin Crenshaw, and it'll be four on Crenshaw. 
And team foul number two on the demon. And that should put the win on the free throw line. For you too. Going to get Ricky Harmon into the ball game. As Harmon comes off the bench for the Demons and goes ahead and Crenshaw will get a chance to sit on the pines. You know, I'm, I'm maybe, uh, how many games have you seen big games in which the top players wind up sitting out close to the game? As uh, DeWitt hits the first free throw, it happens more times than not. DeWitt hits his first free throw, 38-35. Tigers up. DeWitt fires again, it's good. 39 to 35. Tigers up by four now. As Michael Boyd will bring it to the front court or north court. To the right side to George Peoples. Peoples to Boyd. To the left side to Fields. Fields gives it back to Boyd. To Peoples on the wing. Holds it high overhead looking underneath. Back to Boyd. Now to Fields. Back to the way in. Puts it back to Peoples. Firing from the side of the key. It's off the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by Adams with the first and Tigers. Jeff gives it out to Jeff St. Clair. St. Clair into the front court, goes to the lane, holds it up, gives it to DeWitt. He'll fire from 20 feet, off the iron, no good. Rebound, slaps around, and it's Tiger ball. As uh, Harmon and Adams contesting for that, and they say it went out off of uh, Harmon. So the Tigers will have it out of bounds. As DeWitt inbounds it, gives it to Eads. Works on people, goes to the baseline, fires off that baseline, off the iron, no good. We got a whistle and a foul. And it's called on Stefan as he goes into the rebound position. And on Stefan, that is number three. Team foul number one on the Tigers will be out of bounds to the Demons. Team foul number two on the Tigers. Yeah, the one on Jimmy Early. How come you tell that one finger first time? How about, how about one on Jimmy Early? Oh. All right, as people will inbound it for the Demons. He gives it to Michael Boyd, and Boyd will bring it to the front court now. Comes right across the center circle. The field's on the left side, quarter court. As they go back around the horn, the people's on the quarter court right side. As George looking underneath, gives it back to Boyd. Top of the key, back to people's way outside with it right now. Back to Boyd, now they come to fields on the near side, and back to Boyd as they work it around the perimeter, trying to penetrate to get in. As Michael Boyd standing outside with the ball for the demons, to the right side, to people. Now they come across court to the near side, to field, and back to Boyd. In the corner with it to Peoples on the left side. As Peoples with the ball looking underneath. Back to Boyd to Peoples. He'll fire out of the corner. And he puts up the air ball. No good, but it's tipped up and in by Fields. Is that a pass or a shot? I believe it was a shot. 39 to 37 as DeWitt brings it back for the Tigers. To St. Clair firing out of the top of the key. It's off the front iron. No good. Rebound comes out of Norfolk Travel. As Harmon had it. Tied up McKinney White and goes up traveling. And the Tigers want a timeout. So it's 3.08 left to play in the third quarter. Preston 39, Northport 37. We'll be back right after this. Play in the third quarter. And the Tigers leading by two, 39 to 37. They have the ball out of bounds in the front court. As the Tigers saving off the Demons, but both teams now in foul problems. So what do you think? Well, Princeton with Miller with four, Crenshaw with four. Fields has been the dominant factor in this third quarter. He has three field goals. He has handled the ball a great deal. He's more or less led the offense, I believe, in this third quarter. And uh, right now, Jesse Field is the difference in the ballgame. Although Princeton still has a lead, but I think Jesse Field is the dominant player out there right now. Well, Princeton's not shooting very good right now. Either. They've only made two out of eight from the field in this quarter, so it's really hard. Yeah. With Miller out, they've got to shoot good. We got 3:08 left to play in the third quarter, 39 to 37. The Tigers are leading by two. As uh, Jeff St. Clair cleans up some of the pom pom call out. <laughs> the pom -pom I guess you call it that. The Tigers will have the ball out of bounds in the front quarter. Deeds then it to St. Clair. As uh, St. Clair comes way outside, he's going to set the offense. Starts moving it towards the right side slowly now. And they go down to Vaughn the post, firing off the post, no good, rebound, Fort will go down by White of Northport. Out to Boyd, Boyd into the front court, driving, lays it up, they roll the ball, no good, rebound, comes down to Jeff Adams of the Tigers. Gets it out to James DeWitt. DeWitt takes it to the front court on the dribble. Gives it to Jeff St. Clair, and Jeff will start the offense. He's firing the side of the key, it's on the iron, no good, rebound, pulled down by Fields of Northport. The Tigers getting one shot only. As Fields leads it out to Harmon. Harmon into the front court with it. Still dribbling. Gives it back to Peoples. And Peoples gives it to Kenny White. And they go across to Jesse Fields. 
And he'll give it to Michael Boyd. And Boyd on the dribble with it now for the Demon. The people. The Boyd. The people. So they just pass back and forth with it on the far side outside the Tiger zone. They can call Kitty White with a foul anytime they want to on Jeff St. Clair. And now we got a foul call in there somewhere. Because they call on Jeff St. Clair, Bob. You called it the wrong way. No, sir. I did. Kitty White is really uh, panhandling Jeff St. Clair. So on Jeff St. Clair, that's his third foul. Is that right? Second. Second foul. And team foul number two on the Tigers, is that right? Number three. three. You didn't have Mark down there, how'd you know? I had him, I had him in that great... As inbound pass, the field firing from 20 feet good. 39 to 39, tie ball game now. The Tigers come to the offense. Just St. Clair with the ball, brings the bang right across the center circle. To the right side of the wind, he's on the wing. Holds it overhead, looking underneath. They got these loose on the baseline, works on people's fake fires. We got a whistle, and these is really dumped. And what well, we got? What a fish called it, what went in? Foul call in 22, that would be on George Peoples, but he called it before the shot. That's number four on Peoples, and that'll be the Tiger ball out. Number three on Peoples, number three, three on the team. Team number three, number four on Peoples. As the wit will inbound it for the Tigers, he gets it into ease in the corner. To St. Clair, to the wit on the far side, firing from outside, we got a whistle. And a foul, and that will be called on Harmon, I believe. No, it is not, it's called on 12, Kenny White. Kenny White. And on White, that is foul number four. We now have three North, North Fork Blue Demons with four fouls. Fenshaw, Peoples, and White. As the Tigers will have the ball out of bounds on the side court, front court, as East will inbound it. As East brings it in to St. Clair. Yes, takes it outside to the center circle, and they'll set the offense from out there. Against the one, two, two, I know the Demons in a man to man. As the Wick with the ball, working on field, goes to the lane, gives it back to the Wit, in the corner with it. As the Wit, working on Foster, goes to the lane, he'll fire from the lane, it's good. He sets it for the Tigers, 41 to 39. As Mark Lynn brings it to the front court, he gives it for Michael Boyd. That's uh, Michael Boyd with the ball out front, starts to turn the right side. He gives it to Foster. Foster gives it back to Boyd. They come to the near side to Glenn. Firing from outside, good. Mark Glenn hits it from 18 feet, and we got a tie ball game at 41 41 with a minute five to play. As Mike Eads with the ball stops to get some instructions from Coach Ralph Ball in the backcourt. And the ball off loose, picked up by Eads, gets it to St. Clair. As Jeff driving, loses his foul, still on the dribble, gets it out to Eads. Eads goes down the lane, leaves it for Stephon, works across the lane, fires, no good. Rebound, up around, picked up by Stephon, fires again, got it. Stephon, as Eads knocked that ball off to him. The Tigers on top, as Glenn comes to the front court for Norfolk, firing off the baseline, no good. Tipped up blocked by Harmon, no good. Rebound pulled out by Eads, as Eads will bring it to the front court for the Tigers. Working on win. Now he gets it to St. Clair. 27 seconds to play in the fourth, in the third quarter. As he goes underneath, he is fouled. He was hit front and back. And a foul call on 24. It's on Mark Glenn. That's number one on Mark Glenn. Team foul number four on the Demons. It'll be Tiger ball out of bounds. 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. 43-41, the Tigers up. Now, East was hit front and back, so which one are they going to call it on? They going to call it on the fronter or the back? I think they called it on Mark Glenn. I thought they called on Michael Boyd. Well, I thought it was on Boyd. Well, how? They're in the bonus then. They call on Boyd. It's the 15th out. So the one this one took place. So that I don't know how that could happen. <laughs> that will put Mike Eads on the free throw line for the Tigers. 24 seconds playing the third quarter. That foul was on 24. The foul was on 24. Right. The foul was on Mark Glenn. It's a good so he hits his first free throw, 44 to 41 now. Tigers up by three. As he's on the line, ready to shoot, he fires again. It's good. 45 41. Tigers up by four with 24 seconds to play in the third quarter. As Foster to the front court with it for the Demon. To the left side to Mark Glenn, back to Foster, starts to turn the top of the key. Back to Glenn, back to Foster. The Glenn just bring it down for the last shot. 10 seconds on the clock now. As Foster with the ball, starts it toward the lane, gives it to Mark Glenn. In the corner with it, the field firing deep out of the corner off the iron, no good, rebound. Knocked outside, and that's the buzzer of one of the demons on the floor, and uh, Harmon. But in the third quarter play, the Princeton Tigers, 45 
the North Fork Blue Demons 41, and we'll be back right after this. <laughs> All right, we're talking with the officials here, George Simon and Bob McLean. Fourth quarter, 45-41, Tigers going to join the four-point lead, Bob. Well, Preston picked up four, four field goals in, the, in that third quarter, and uh, North Fork picked up six. North Fork did not go to the foul line, so they remain nine of 13 for 41 points. Princeton hit four of four and had 15 of 18 for the game, which is excellent for free throw shooting. Mike Ease on the night has uh, 50, 17 points to lead Princeton in scoring. And Charlie, you have the uh, rebounding in front of Right, in the third quarter, Princeton made four out of 13 for 30 percent. They pulled down five rebounds and committed three turnovers. So they, they're not shooting right well very well right now in the third quarter. Hopefully they'll pick it up. Jack, do you have no fork? All right, no fork in the third quarter. With six out of 15, 40 percent. They had 10 rebounds and three turnovers. Thank you, Glenn. All right, we're ready for fourth quarter action. We got eight minutes of basketball action left tonight. Right now, the Preston Tigers, 45. The North Fork Blue Demons, 41. And we got fouls all over the place. Now we'll have the wit in the jump against Fields. And the Demons win the uh, Wendy Toss, or as they tip it to Kenny White. White takes it to the corner, gives it outside to George Peoples, to Michael Boyd. There's Boyd standing way outside with it. In the corner, they go underneath to Crenshaw, firing off the baseline. It's so good, we got a whistle on a foul underneath. And it's on one of the Tigers, but I was screen off, couldn't see who. It may be Adams. No, it is not. It'll be Stefan. Stefan Strain. And on Stefan, that's number four. And that's team foul, number four on the Tigers. That will put Quentin Crenshaw on the free throw line for the North Fork Blue Demons. Quentin Crenshaw so far tonight is two of three from the foul line. He's a good free throw shooter. Crenshaw fires. It's good. In the third quarter, Preston and North Fork only got 12 points apiece, which is the lowest production out point per quarter tonight. As Crenshaw ready to fire again. He fires. It's good. 45-43. As Norfolk trying to steal the inbound pass, the St. Clair comes up with it. Jeff moving it to the front court now. Starts it toward the right side. Now he's standing in the middle, moves it toward the left side. He got Ease on the wing. As Ease with the ball. Starts it toward the baseline. Drops it underneath to the wet. Into the corner. They got St. Clair coming around the wheel, working on Boyd. We got a whistle on a foul. And that's on Michael Boyd, I believe. It is on Mike Boyd. It's the second team foul number six. And uh, it's second foul on Michael. That puts St. Clair on the free throw line for the Tigers. Jeff has a bit of free throw line tonight until this point. Jeff St. Clair on the line to shoot a one-on-one -on -one for the Tigers. He fires the first one. It's on the iron. No good. Rebound. Flipped around. Picked up by the Demons. It's Kenny White controls it out to the left side. As he leaves it for Crenshaw. Crenshaw gets it to Michael Boyd. Boyd takes it to the front court. Down the right side to People. Back outside to Boyd. As Boyd top of the key with it, brings it to the near side to Crenshaw. I believe it is. I'm screened all. It may be Fields. He's still sitting right between me and him. No, it's Kenny White. Kenny White firing from outside on the iron. No good. Rebound to Eves and heavy traffic as Mike has done a yeoman job on the boards tonight. 45 to 43. The Tigers leading by two. We got six minutes, 57 seconds to play in the ball game. As Eves with the ball on the wing for the Tigers. Drives the baseline. Puts it up. No good. Rebound down to Eves. He puts it up again. We got a traveling call. Six fifty to play, and the turnover gives the ball to the Demons. And Michael Boyd now will bring it to the front court for the Demons. Comes right across the center line. The center circle moves it toward the left side to Kenny White. He gives it back to Boyd, and now White with the ball as they pass it back and forth. Dropping underneath, it's off loose. Picked up by Adams with the Tigers. As Jeff Adams controls for the Tigers. That's the St. Clair drives, leaves it for Dewitt, firing off the baseline. Good as Dewitt. But the Tigers out by 47 to 43 score with 6.24 to play in the ball game. As Boyd into the front court with it for Northbrook to White. To Fields on the high post. He'll fire from the high post. It's good. Jesse Fields from the high post. 47-45. Aziz will move it back to the front court for the Tigers. Works it inside. Works on people. Starts it toward the right side. Goes toward the lane with it. Holds it up now. As they get the wick coming across top the key. Firing from 16 feet. It's off the iron. No good at him. Contesting for the ball, picked up off the floor by Boyd of Norfolk. And he steps on the baseline. As Maxine over side to side was Jeff Adams. 
And Adams forced him to the baseline, and Boyd tipped on the baseline on the side, baseline side out of bounds. So now we get Jimmy Miller back into the ball game for the Tigers. Uh, back to the ball game. So St. Clair will bring it to the front court, and they're going to bring the uh, try to bring the beams up and make them play a man to man. As these with the ball out front to St. Clair. St. Clair starts it to the lane to Stephon on the baseline. Gives it back outside to Eve. As these working inside. Starts it toward the lane. Works on field. Flips it underneath to Stephon. Puts it up and in. We got a traveling call. That bucket will not count. 47-45, Tigers lead by two, but North Fork has the ball. As Boyd will bring it to the front court for North Fork. Brings it up to the right side. Directing traffic, looking underneath. Tigers in the one 3 one zone. To the near side, to way now to Fields on the baseline. Gives it back outside, people with the ball on the far side. To Fields, firing off the baseline, no good. Rebound knocked out of bounds, it's off the demons, it'll be Tiger ball. 47-45, Tigers lead by two right now. And the Tigers will have it out of bounds as they're cleaning something off the floor down there right now. Is one of the Tigers injured, is that Eve? It must be Mike Eve. Eve's are helping, he's lying on the floor down to our left here. And has he got a cramp or is he hurt? As the, uh, Eve is, we see him setting up right now, maybe his sprained ankle as we screened off on some of the crowd. And uh, ankle. Okay, he got hit in the uh, abdominal, I think, or the groin. And so they're recuperating him right now. So while we got time out on the floor, let's pause 30 seconds for this commercial message. Boyd as Jimmy Miller set the pick and took the charge and that's number three on Boyd that put Miller on the line. 47-45. Now he gets up. He'll come back into the ball game. Jimmy has six points on the night. He has not scored in the second or third quarter of this ball game. As Miller on the line to shoot a one and one. He fires the first one. It's good. 48-45, Tigers up by three. We got 5.07 up to play in the ball game. And Jimmy ready to fire one more. He's ready, it's good. 48, well, 49 to 45, as Boyd will bring it to the front court for the Demon. Throws it toward the left side. As they pass it back and forth to Mark uh, Gwynn, they give it to people firing from outside, good. George Peoples hits it from 18 feet for the Demons. 49 to 47, Tigers lead by two. As St. Clair will move it to the front court for the Tigers. Starts it toward the right side. To the wet, he's out on the wing. They give it to Stephon on the high post. To Miller in the lane, works on the lane. Scott blocked, the field blocked And the Demons come out with it. And they've got Glenn on the breakaway, no good. Tipped up once, no good. Rebound comes down the field, he puts it up in the air. Jesse Fields ties it up for the Demons, 49 to 49. 423 to play in the ball game and it's tied. So St. Clair with the ball out front, gonna make the demons, so he's gonna spread it out into a man to man as they're making him come out. As St. Clair with the ball, brings it toward the near side, working on Mike Boyd. Starts it toward the right side to the wit. The wit looking underneath. Gives it to St. Clair in the corner. The Miller on the low post. Goes under, puts it up and in on a pretty move. Boy, look good there. 51 to 49 as Miller hits it for the Tigers. 354 to play in the ball game. Tigers lead by two. As Mark Glenn with the ball for North Fork. To Mike Boyd. Back to Glenn. And Glenn now will fire. Good from 18 feet. As North Fork shooting the eyes out from the perimeter right now. 51 to 51. Tie ball game with 337 to play. As St. Clair this is up outside to bring the Demons out into a man to man. Now he's directing traffic. Starts it towards the far side. Gives it to Eve. Eve. Working on Glenn. Goes around. Boyd goes across the top of the key. Down the demons back into that zone. As they get St. Clair out top of the key, we got a whistle and a foul. And it's 
call one Mark Glenn. That's number two on Glenn. And that'll put St. Clair on the line for the Tigers. So the Tigers tied up at 51-51. We got 318 left to play in the ball game, and we will have Jeff St. Clair on the free throw line for the Tigers to shoot a one-on-one. As the officials lining them up, giving them plenty of time to settle them down. And now the Demons want a timeout, so it's 318 left to play in the ball game. North Fork 51, Preston 51. We'll be back right after this. There is a Christmas. The North Fork cheerleaders doing their thing out in front of us right now. By the way, the North Fork JV has defeated the Preston JV 69 to 57 here tonight. For North Fork, Ricky Helm had 20 points, Brian Washington had 16, John Durant had 16, and Paul Jones at 12. For Preston, Troy Clemens, who leads the state in field goal percentage, at 14, and Joe Harrison at 12. And you know, Troy Clemens leads the state in field goal percentage for Boston Golf Players. Of course, oh, so one for one, two for two. That's part of the Thousand percent. You can't do any better than that, can you? If he ain't leading, he's fine. You suppose they've got a minimum number at this point this season. <laughs> Don't bother us with details. <laughs> It never has affected us before, Glenn. That's right, so don't bother us with these <laughs> Just St. Clair will be on the free throw line for the Tigers. We got 318 left to play in the ball game. It's 51 to 51. And boy, there's a bunch of fouls walking around on the floor out there right now. Everybody's got a bunch on them. From now on, every foul call, we may lose a player, huh? St. Clair ready to go there. up on the way good. He'll have a second one. 52 to 51. Tigers up by one. And Jeff St. Clair.
The Tigers up with a minute 16 to play. And the Demons move it out of bounds. Did he force that turnover? I couldn't tell. He sure did. Good luck. He Best forced it okay. Sure and the Demons want to tie it up. So with a minute 14 to play, Princeton 58, Northport 55, and the Tigers have got the ball. We'll be back. Just pause for this. You want to bet that the Demons don't come out with his own trap? Well, almost has to. And they're going to have to force the ball because I don't think Princeton's going to uh, take any unuseful shots. At least as, as a Princeton fan, I certainly hope not. Well, I'm sure that they'll take this. If they can get it inside the middle, he'll go for the shot and hope to get the foul too. Princeton's going to spread it out there. They're going to they're gonna slow it down. Minute 14. Don't you think? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. I think they're going to touch their offense. They, they got Eve's hot, they got Miller hitting. Well, they and they got yeah, they, either one of them. They may stop the momentum yeah. if they've got Florida. I don't know, right let's now. see. All right. Now, Tigers come back. They got Jimmy Miller, they got Stephon Strain, they got Mike Eve, they got Jeff St. Clair, they got James DeWitt, and that's all five of the original starters. But man, how many fouls are walking out out there right now? Y'all count them? <laughs> <laughs> well, Stephon Strain has three, Jimmy Miller has four, and the other Tigers are in pretty good shape. All right, you wait till Norfolk comes out and counts their fouls now. <laughs> 47, 51. <laughs> There's a bunch of them. All right, a minute 14 to play, and the Demons will certainly sit this thing up into a death trap, a zone trap, and they've got to put pressure on the ball. As the wet inbounds it, and he's with the ball, works it slowly towards the front court. As the Demons do set the trap, as St. Clair with the ball, gives it back to Easy, takes it to the front court, and now they trap him at mid court. St. Clair puts it to the front court, it's taken away by Northport. Field and we've got kicking the ball around, but no call. The shot is up, no good. Rebound comes down to Whip got it in traffic. And the ball knocked loose. Put up for a shot by Crenshaw. Good. St. Clair into the front court with it for Preston. Tigers lead by one. As Jeff into the front court. Gets it out to Eve with 41 seconds. Tigers lead by one. Eve with the ball on the far side. Holding it. They double teaming. Starts it down inside. Gives it to DeWitt. DeWitt working on the baseline. Comes back out front. Gives it to St. Clair. Across the key with it to Eve. 28 seconds on the clock. As DeWitt with the ball. And boy, Michael Boyd just probably no call on it. Eve gets it back to him. And now they really drop DeWitt. I mean, really drop Eve. And Michael Boyd really hit him. But we're down with four players for four fouls. Okay, 22 seconds left to play. Preston leading 58 to 57. Mike Eads on the free throw line for the Tigers. It's going to be interesting. Is that an intentional foul or one on one? They did not call it a deliberate foul. It'd be a one on one. Well, that just, that just adds up to the bunch they've missed tonight. They missed a bunch out here underneath this. Not missed the kick of the ball. Right? No. How oh, about this guy kicking the ball? Rolling down yeah, the feet. We're playing soccer. He's ready to fire. He's got the first one up. Good. 59 to 57. And he will have one more. we got 22 seconds to play. And now Norfolk wants a timeout. They want to ice the shooter. They want to make these service. And that's the fourth timeout for Norfolk. So with 22 seconds left to play, Preston 59, Norfolk 57. We'll be back right after this commercial message. What, 38? All right, we got 22 seconds left to play. The Bristol Tigers, 59. The North Fork Blue Demons, 57. Glenn, does this hold as many as 3,000? Yeah, uh, it's supposed to seat about 2,800, I believe, and I'd say they got about 35 in here now because they got the stage opened up. I noticed in a newspaper article talking about the Logan Wildcats last week that uh, they were talking about the uh, farm on limited the number of people into their uh, stadium and whatnot. The good thing is everybody didn't walk in on that tournament over Princeton. If they walk in here right now, we might be in trouble. But uh, the reason they didn't, couldn't walk in is because you couldn't walk through the place. Well, it's true. He'd have to have a reservation. And that kid that kept kicking you in the back of the head wasn't losing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike Eads on the free throw line for one shot for the Tigers. 22 seconds left to play in the ball game. Preston leading 59 to 57. As Mike Eads goes to the line for the Tigers. He's ready. He fires. It's good. 60 to 57. As Jesse Fields with the ball to Michael Boyd for the Demons. As Boyd into the front court with it. Deep in the corner with it to Glenn. Back outside to Boyd. Back to Glenn. They go to Fields on the low post. Goes under. Lays it up. Good. And the Demons want a timeout. And they call a timeout with 10 seconds. So with 10 seconds to play, Preston 60, Northport 59. We'll be back right after this.
We got 10 seconds left to play. And George Simon, the official here, says, Man, there's got to be an easier way to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can understand what he's talking about. Sure, okay, Glenn. <laughs> 60 to 59. The Tigers lead. Now they've got the ball out of bounds down on the baseline. Now, how many timeouts do the Tigers have? If they can't get it in, do they have a timeout to spare? Uh, Princeton has two, maybe three timeouts left. Okay. So the Tigers come out. Now, they've got Stefan. He'll take it out of bounds. They'll have St. Clair and Eads. And they'll go to Witt's going to take it out of bounds. And they'll have Stefan and Miller up at half court. Huh? As the Witt will inbound it. So the Demons come back. They got Jesse Fields. They got Quentin Crenshaw. And also out there, they got George Peoples, Michael Boyd and uh, Mark Glenn. As they get the ball into Jeff St. Clair in the backcourt, he gets it to Miller, Miller with the ball, not close, picked up by Fields, we got a whistle on a foul, a foul, Miller will be on the line. And who's it called on? Mike, Mike, Boyd. Mike Boyd, I believe, it is Mike Boyd, it's his fifth foul. I believe it is Mike Boyd, and if it is, that's his fifth. He comes out, and it'll put Miller on the line for the Tigers with four seconds to play. <laughs> it's interesting to note that Mike Boyd picked up all of his fouls in the second half. So now Michael Boyd leaves the ball game. Now this year, Glenn, don't we have 30 seconds instead of 60 seconds to get another player in? That's right. Hey, they got it back to six. It was four seconds on the clock. And this gives more time to get that free throw, get that uh, substitute in, because they've already run off 18 seconds. I started the stopwatch. So as they get the argument going here, the Tigers want a timeout. So with six seconds or four seconds to play, it is Preston 60, North 459. We're going to pause 30 seconds for this commercial message. All right, now, they're going to put five seconds. They're going to split the difference. Okay, so we got five seconds to play, and it is Preston 60, North 459. And now they take one second off the clock, and that makes North Fork people mad. Well, you would have to call that an indecisive call, because it's either four seconds or six seconds. And I don't know about this split the difference business. Well, you know what I said about averages. I've heard the story of the, the rabbit that got shot almost. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Jimmy Miller on the free throw line. He used to shoot a one and one. He was fouled by Michael Boyd. Michael Boyd fouled out. Now, in all this confusion, see, Jennings Boyd has had two minutes to tell his ball team how he wants them to play. He didn't have to get his man on the floor in 30 seconds. That's very true. Whatever that's worth. So for the Demons, now, coming back out, we'll have William Foster in the ball game. And also with uh, George Peoples, and we have a situation Crenshaw, Jesse Fields, and uh, Mark Glenn. We have a situation where the timekeeper obviously put two seconds on that clock, and that, to me, is just not right. Uh, the official should have been very firm in telling him that it's four seconds and forget about it. Well, the official doesn't know it's four seconds. He didn't see the four seconds up there. All they had to do was ask us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Charlie Wright was very emphatic. I was telling him four all the time with a bop. As the Tigers are out on the floor right now, we'll have Miller on the line, and they're still talking with the coaching staff over at Northport. And now, they're going to line them up, and we'll have Miller on the line. And these are some important foul shots. Five seconds to play. And Miller on the line to shoot a one and one as Jim says he's ready. They give him the ball. Jim on the line. Five seconds to play. Tigers beat the one. Miller fires. It is no good. And the rebound comes down the field. Gets it out to people. People's the front court. To all the fine good. To Mark Glenn. And Glenn hit it. Mark Glenn hits the bucket. at the buzzer to win it. Final score. Four for 61. Coming down, and with the ball going through, with no time left on the clock, we have the Demons, a 61 to 60 win over the Preston Tigers. In the fourth quarter, 
the North Fork Blue Demons got 20 points for a big quarter of the night. Well, in the fourth quarter, the Princeton Tigers got 15 points. A five-point difference. The Tigers had a four-point lead going into the quarter. So the final score of the ball game, North Fork 61, Princeton 60. We'll be back with a wrap-up. First, let's ball for this. Man, this place is going wild. North Fork is really going wild. Final score, North Fork 61. Preston 60 as North Fork won it with a shot that went through the net with no time. Now, that one second made all the difference in the world, didn't it? It, it sure did, and it was long, and the official side to just no um, excuse for that. The quarter scoring for the uh, Blue Demons, they got 14 points in the first quarter, 15 in the second, 12 in the third, 20 in the fourth for a final score of 61. For the Preston Tigers, they had 14 in the first, 19 in the second, 12 in the third, and 15 in the fourth for a final score of 60. We'll be back with all individual stats for this ball for this. Final score, North Fork 61, Preston 60, as the Tigers beaten at the buzzer on a controversial shot that has uh, really not been decided yet. Tigers also lost the JV game here, 69 to 57. Uh, Charlie, you ready with your uh, Preston shooting bad program for the game tonight? Preston made 19 out of 40 for 47 percent. They pulled down 24 rebounds, committed 16 turnovers. All right, we're getting tables shoved around all over the place over here. I don't know if we can hold a position or not on this thing. Let's pause 30 seconds for this message and see if we can come back later.
We're playing the uh, Green Bar East Gardens at the uh, Preston Gymnasium, the next to Mount Cedar Tiger. And next Tuesday night, the Mount View Golden Knights come in. So come in and see the Tigers play. The Tigers still uh, need to get it going. They, they had it going here tonight, and it was rudely taken away from them. Final score, North Fork 61, Preston 60. I'm Glenn May, speaking on behalf of Charlie Wright, Bob Graham, Jack O'Leary. We've had Craig go on the interviews and so forth, saying we appreciate the fact that you've allowed us to be a part of your evening. The fact of the matter is, we thank you so much for listening. Good night, all. <laughs>